Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. A busy Friday at the Justice Center. One trial coming to a close, a second one nearly wrapping up, and a third still has testimony underway. The man at the center of an intoxication manslaughter case sentenced to 60 years behind bars. The intoxication manslaughter trial of Christopher Del Toro ended yesterday in a guilty verdict. Del Toro was driving drunk and hit a head on, killing 44 year old Jessica Brill. This all happening in March of 2022 on South Flores in East Dixon. The 60 year sentence longer than the charge normally gets because Del Toro had a previous criminal record. A jury also deliberating in the case of Wilfredo Montemayor. That taking place right now, Montemayor sought a Balcones Heights officer in 2021 and was charged with attempted capital murder of a police officer. When this trial began Tuesday, Montemayor pleaded guilty in front of the jury and then the case went to the punishment phase. Yesterday before the state rested, dramatic body cam footage of that shooting was shown to the jury. Montemayor is facing five to 99 years or life in prison. Meantime, testimony continuing in the murder trial of Angel Gonzalez, the medical examiner testifying how Gonzalez's brother Isaac Aguilar died back in 2022, stabbed during a party in the backyard right there. If found guilty, Gonzalez could be behind bars for life. And new at noon, an instructional coach and substitute teacher at Lyndon B. Johnson Elementary School now facing charges. Police accuse him of touching a student inappropriately in a classroom. Officers arrested 28-year-old Duke Robert Aguirre yesterday. The student's parents told police that the victim and her sister both had said that Aguirre touched her inappropriately while in the back of a classroom. The affidavit states that he also told her that she was, quote, cute. Edgewood ISD police say Aguirre confessed to having a sexual attraction to the victim. Police say that he told them that in the past, he both watched and owned child pornography. Aguirre is charged with an improper relationship with a student. It's unclear if any other charges are expected to be filed in this case. Was it a random shooting or did someone intentionally take aim at a 15 year old boy? Those are the questions San Antonio police are still trying to answer. Katrina Weber reports the teen shot and critically wounded right in front of his mother. With yellow crime scene tape, San Antonio police hope to contain some clues that will lead them to the people who got away. They're looking for one in particular who fired a gun, hitting a 15 year old boy in the head at the Haven Apartments as he rode in a car with his mother. Police found the pair around 10 last night, still in the car, but down the street where they went to get help. The mother told officers they were attempting to enter the complex in the 9900 block of West Military when someone started firing at them. From what police say, it almost sounds like an ambush. They say the shooter was among five people who popped out of that area near the leasing office, then took aim at the victim. The last update from police was that the 15 year old who was shot in his head was in critical condition and being treated at a hospital. They still don't know why he was shot. The shooter got away. And the only description police had was that he left in a white car. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Let's get outside with live cam. Ooh, let, let's just get outside. 73? What Why today? aren't we doing the news outside know. today? You can't pass this weather up, Justin. You can't. I mean, this is this is picture perfect. I, I use that term a lot, but I really, really mean it today. Uh, as I always like to say, roll your windows down, turn the music up, and just cruise around. This is that kind of weather. <laughs> Uh, it is going to be beautiful not only today, but into the weekend, too. Here's our forecast today. 76 at 3 o'clock, 76, 4 p.m. It's warm, but the humidity is lower, and we're about 10 degrees cooler. We're going to be about 10 degrees cooler than we were yesterday. Yesterday got all the way up to 87. And today we're talking mid-70s, and with that northwesterly wind, it's, it's driving in a lot drier air. This evening, if you got evening plans, perfect. 63 at 9 o'clock, 61 at 10 p.m. We're down into the 50s. By 11 o'clock, yeah, you may want a light jacket, but it won't be just cold. Uh, this weekend, 76 on Saturday, 79 on Sunday. It'll be warm on Sunday, but really a, a great weekend. Last weekend of the rodeo, perfect weather for that if you uh, plan to go out and enjoy the outdoor festivities there. And rain chances, what about that? Well, we add them in next week, Wednesday into Thursday. We get a cold front storm system possibility of a few showers. We'll take a closer look at that forecast for you coming up in just a couple minutes. 
Thank you, Justin. Oh, it's the weekend, so that means some traffic alerts for you. We've got another round of closures this weekend on the far northwest side. TxDOT shutting down three cloverleaf interchanges. That starts tonight at 9 at Loop 1604 and I-10. The main lanes of both highways are going to be closed starting at 9 through 5 Monday morning, so be aware. We've got an article on KSAT.com that gives you all the details on the detours in the area. We also have maps outlining what the interchange will look like this weekend. This is all part of that massive 1604 expansion project that is adding flyover ramps over both highways. There's a QR code to get you all the information you need. Early voting now underway for the Texas primary election. The polls are going to be open until 6 o'clock tonight. And tomorrow they're going to be open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Sunday. You can even vote on Sunday from noon to 6. You also have next week to vote early before Election Day on March 5th. If you want to take a look at the sample ballot or a list of polling locations, just head over to KSAT.com. Today, marking the anniversary of the first day of the Alamo siege, a ceremony opening up a series of events, all marking the days leading up to the Battle of the Alamo. You can take steps back in time right now and remember this historic event. This is happening until 4 o'clock this afternoon. The Alamo transformed into a living history exhibit. There will be demonstrations immersing you in Texas history. There will also be some more events in coming days. Just go to thealamo.org and get all the information. He is an up and coming superstar in country music. You're looking at William Beckman on stage and you can consider him a local. He was born and raised in Del Rio. You might remember he was just named the Grand Marshal of Texas Cavaliers River Parade. But before he boards a barge, he is playing at the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. He'll be performing tomorrow after the rodeo competition at noon on the circle stage. We had a chance to sit down and talk with him earlier this week. We asked him about playing in front of friends, family and fans in such a big venue right down the highway from his home after showing animals and watching concerts at the rodeo as a youngster. I did. I saw Dirks Bentley, uh, Gary Allen, and Train, the band Train. Um, I think I might have seen a couple of, I might have seen Brooks and Dunn too, but uh, it was awesome. So when you were sitting there watching the concert, were you imagining you up on that stage? I definitely was, but at the time, it was kind of when I was first getting into music, so it, I was still, I knew that that was cool and that I wanted to do that, but it wasn't, I guess it didn't seem as feasible for me then because I was still kind of learning how to play guitar, so, but the, going to those shows, I think, fueled the fire that I had in, in order to pursue it and like stick with it and put so in you, hours and practice and stuff. About that voice, huh? He also told us how excited he is to be asked to be the Grand Marshal. He has played in San Antonio. He's played Houston. He's played the Grand Ole Opry and now a Grand Marshal. You're going to hear a lot from him on all those accolades and all those things that he's been able to do in such a young time. His career is just getting rolling. We're going to have more from him on the broadcast of the River Parade coming up on April 22nd live right here on KSA 12. So I'm assuming he plays country music. Oh, pure country. Pure country. He's got that. He's got play got the that. opera, huh? Now, he can sing anything. I've, I've heard people that have listened to him say he can sing the song or the, the uh, phone book if he wanted him to. Oh, yeah? But yeah, he's, he's, he's remarkable. Oh, okay. So, so he, even and his name again? William Beckman. He sang a little Frank Sinatra the other day. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It was amazing. He's That's like, cool. Kid's got a voice. Great. All right, if nothing else, the Spurs are pretty consistent. Starting their final four on the rodeo road trip, the way they ended the first part. As the city grows, so does the airport. San Antonio International has got some big plans. But what are we looking for as travelers? We ask the question after the break. Take a look at this piece of technology. It's coming to the San Antonio International Airport. The city council approving a lease. It would run up to five years and they're gonna rent a robot. It's a five foot, five inch, 420 pound autonomous security robot 
You likely won't see it, though, at the airport. The city's director of airport says that the K-5 robot from Nightscope won't be used in public. It's going to be used to check out the daily door alarms that get triggered in various security areas. Well, the director says having the robot nearby, the most common ones, will free up staff. And that's just one of the new plans going into effect at San Antonio International. It's now got more than 40 nonstop destinations right now, but more could be added if some city leaders are successful. Tiffany Huertas looks into the importance of air connectivity and what passengers would like to see more of. Uh, I'm going to visit some family. Jesse Lopez is traveling from San Antonio to Guadalajara, Mexico. As a frequent flyer, he wants to see more nonstop destinations. More direct flights to any destination, really. San Antonio International Airport offers more than 40 nonstop destinations, with the first nonstop flight to Europe starting in May. There's a lot of opportunities. Tim O'Crongley, Deputy Aviation Director for the City of San Antonio, explains what this new flight to Frankfurt means for our community. The economic benefit that you get from it, it's not only the direct benefit from the flight, but it's who will come here, what will be invested in the future, what will we take you know, to Europe. Uh, it, it's really a launching point for additional economic development for San Antonio and the region. O'Crongley says air connectivity is important for a community. The airport is a very large economic generator. And with today's mobile society, the way airports move people and traffic and goods, it's really a life hub of a community. What type of infrastructure are companies looking for at an airport? They, they want to make sure we have good connectivity, you know, routes and, and, and that kind of opportunities, but also other infrastructure. You know, terminals represent the community. So they're the first thing you see when you arrive and last thing you see when you leave. The airport was recently awarded $30 million in grants from the Federal Aviation Administration for upgrades to Terminal A and for a new terminal that opens in 2028. This is the site of our future new terminal. O'Crongley says the new terminal will be added here, a 17-gate facility, approximately 850,000 square feet. More opportunity for new airlines, existing airlines to expand. Uh, we'll have concession programs. You know, they're all for local jobs. Last year, about 10.7 million passengers passed through San Antonio International Airport. And with this new project, they hope to exceed those numbers in the future. So we broke tra uh, passenger records and we look forward to continuing that trend. And that's why we're preparing the airport for the future based on those forecast demands and being able to serve our citizens. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. That's all well and good, but I would like to see the robot at, at like the door when you when you walk in. That would be cool, but why do you need to go anywhere when you got weather oh, like this? Is, that's true. Well, but there's going to be a lot of people coming here. See, we get ah, a lot of visitors. Yeah. There you go. Uh, and they're going to say, "Wow, I'm going to come back to San Antonio because this is awesome. It's uh, so beautiful, yeah. blue skies, and uh, we got great weather today." Now the aquifer's down two tenths of a foot to six forty one point nine. We need some rain. And your pollen count. Look at this list. Tree pollen starting to kick in. In fact, coming up after the break, we're going to take a look at the calendar and show you <laughs> what you can expect for the rest of the spring when it comes uh, to pollen like this. That's coming up. It is Friday, so it's going to be a really good question of the day, so get us thinking before the weekend. You know? uh, okay. Uh, hmm. TGIF, let's do it. Yeah. Okay, well, with the weekend coming up. The Home and Garden Show is happening. Uh, yes, yeah. indeed. And so that great ideas on how to do things. Jen's down there. She's got so much going on. Yeah. But so, you know, of course, all of us, uh, you know, you want to dig in there and do something at home. And maybe you've done He's, something that you're really proud of. Yes. So share the home pro project you are proud of and post pictures. What was your last one you did, David? Uh, chopped down some trees that died from the frost, from the freeze. <laughs> okay. Arr, the biggest yeah. home project I've done in a while. <laughs> and probably turn it into firewood that's ne neatly stacked yes. by the cord, I'm sure. So, Aww. Ursula? Um, I am I'm cleaning house. I am doing Ooh. spring cleaning. And I'm very proud of that because it doesn't happen every year. More power to you, because that's just one of those that's like, eh, yeah. I'll yeah. think about that later. So Yeah, right. so scan that QR code and let us know. Okay, and we just gotta give you a little little scene of what's going on here. A new Filipino restaurant in town. Look at this table, one of the most beautiful tables we have ever had set here. Can't wait to dig in. 
The last time they had the Filipino restaurant on, they brought something to us that was the most amazing thing in the world. I don't remember what it was called. You know the robot at the airport? Uh -huh. We need to get that robot to start delivering food back and forth because it doesn't cost anything but the price of the robot. But that's what that's, that's true. What they can go through Market Square and, and bring back us here, food. Start bring, delivering yeah. food or something. Okay. This, We're coming up with uh, yeah. some high tech that's solutions to this problem, Justin. <laughs> Honestly, that's probably only a few years away. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you're going to have a drone that's going to fly over there, grab some food. That'll work. Bag. We'll take yeah. it. Don't they already deliver pizzas like that? I don't like that. Like, yeah, I don't know. Technology is wild. Uh, what I can tell you is we're excited about the eclipse. 45 days away now, guys. 45 days. Uh, we're bringing you a fact every day as we prepare for this big event. Uh, the moon is 400 times smaller than the sun, but 400 times closer. So that means that when it moves in front of the sun, it blocks it completely. Uh, it's, it's pretty incredible how that works out. And so it just tells you once again how lucky we are to be where we are uh, to get to enjoy uh, this incredible celestial event. And, uh, you know, we've got a lot of people coming to town for this. I just interviewed uh, somebody from New Zealand who is traveling to San Antonio. I'm going to share that story with you here soon. But uh, she's coming all the way from New Zealand to check this out. So there's, uh, there's going to be a lot of visitors once we get into April. Uh, just be aware. We're going to get a lot of traffic and a lot of folks in town. Temperatures today, 76. Uh, 77 Somerset, 77 in Elmendorf, 74 Bernie, 73 Kerrville. Warm weather today, but as I said, not as hot as yesterday and certainly drier. We've got lower humidity levels and a northwesterly wind that is ushering in that drier air. So you look at the dew point trend. It's dry today, dry again tomorrow. You got dew points in the 40s. They start to rise on Sunday, so we start to get dew points in the 50s. Not a big deal. It's, uh, it's Monday into Tuesday where you'll start to notice it once you get dew points in the 60s. Will that lead to some rain? That's the big question. Uh, we'll investigate that here in just a second. Outside, though, we got to enjoy the good stuff at the moment. 72, mostly sunny. North northeast Julie winds at 9, gusting to 21. So still a little breezy, but these winds will calm some as we head into the afternoon. Okay, let's go back to the pollen count. We've got mold. That's almost there every day. But you've got ash, mulberry, elm, and hackberry, all tree pollens. This is the time of year where we start to see the tree pollen kick in. Uh, the numbers aren't huge, so it's not a big deal, but we want to give you a calendar of when all this stuff kind of happens. Uh, mountain cedar, we're past that, so we're not going to worry about that. But elm, that's typically late February to early March. We've seen some of that. Ash has been most prominent last few days. Uh, that typically peaks in mid-March. We're a little, little early for that. Uh, oak, we know how oak goes. It turns everything yellow and green, but that uh, kicks in late March, early April. So we're still not there yet. And it usually continues through mid-May. We got pecan, and then you got uh, those other ones. Typically, are later in the year. But that's the kind of uh, kind of the idea when it comes to the tree pollens. We'll certainly keep you posted on the pollen count as well. Nothing going on across the state of Texas. Here's a look at the forecast down the line. Things stay pretty quiet. We're still kind of influenced by a ridge down here in Mexico. But as we get into next week, things do start to change a little bit. Low develops to the north. That helps to push a front through. That happens on Wednesday and cools us down. And then behind that, we get a little storm system that comes in from the west that may help to develop some showers. Uh, for us, the impacts are going to be pretty low. As you go north and east, there's going to be a ton of severe weather. This is going to be a big system for the country. Again, not necessarily for us. But parts of the country will see quite a bit of weather out of this. So here's how I think our forecast plays out. 76 tomorrow, 79 Sunday, 83 Monday. It gets warm next week. More clouds by Tuesday. Here comes that front. And we think about a 10 to 20% chance of rain. Uh, depending on how all this plays out, Wednesday into Thursday, and it will cool down a little bit as well. So maybe a bit more active as we head into the month of March. What a weekend. Thank you. Coming up in a few, we're going to meet more San Antonio All-Star Hoopsters. And four Taft Raiders are signing up to play at the next level. <laughs> the Victor Wimbanyama and the Spurs starting the final leg of the Rodeo Road Trip. These guys got a little practice time in this week. It showed for most of the game last night against Sacramento. First quarter, that was Devin Vassell with the three. And then he had the... Um, Touch early. Look at that. I like that fake. That's pretty good. Hits another three. Finished with 32. Kings started to pull away, though, in the second quarter. Diario Fox down the baseline. Kings outscored the Spurs 35-25 in the second. Taking to the fourth. DeMontis Sobinas. Sob 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 
Yeah, yeah, nice pass, nice dunk. And then look at this. That's Devin Vassell again for a three. Spurs lead by four right there. But in the end, not enough. That, my friends, was a foul that did not get called. Wimbenyama was fouled by Sabonis. And that starts the break at the other end since it didn't get called. That pretty much sealed it for the Kings right there. They go on to win at 127-122. Spurs now 11-45. and 45. They can't rest. They get on a plane, fly from Sacramento down to L.A. because they got to play the Lakers tonight. Tip-off for that one is at 9.30. They beat the Lakers earlier this year once. So, that's that. All right, it's time to meet more San Antonio All-Stars as we get ready for the first ever high school All-Star basketball game put on by San Antonio Sports and KSAT 12. 120 of the top high school seniors in the area are going to be getting a chance to put their skills on display in games featured all day long on KSAT 12. And All-Stars from Divine and Lavernia thrilled to get nominated and selected. Feeling pretty good about it. Pretty confident. What's it going to mean for you to represent your school out there on the court? Uh, means a lot, sir. Uh, it feels really good, really blessed to be out here and be a part of this team, put in a lot of work. And yeah. Um, it's a very exciting feeling. I mean, ending off the senior year like this, it's an amazing accomplishment. I mean, it's going to be a good competition, but that's what it is. It's competition, and that's what we're here to do is compete. So it's going to be a good thing. I'm super excited. I'm super grateful for the people who um, have like put this together and thought about girls and boys basketball. Um, and yeah, I'm just excited. I mean, I think it's just opening like su opening doors for a lot of different athletes and stuff. I think it's super cool because basketball is played almost just as much as football, and I think it deserves its, <laughs> its stage. I feel good. I'm glad that all the hard work has paid off. Um, my family is super excited for me. Uh, I'm one of the first people in my family to go this far in a sport, so I'm excited to show. Well done, ladies and gentlemen. All right, San Antonio Sports All-Star Game is going to take place on Sunday, March 24th at the Northside Sports Gym. There's going to be four games for tickets, rosters, and how to watch. All you have to do is go to kz.com. Sports All-Star Basketball. Hey, big day at Tad High School. Four football players signed letters of intent to play college ball. Jaden Aylman is committed to play at the University of Mary Hardin Baylor. Even Olsen is going to wear a Southwestern uniform. Sway John Castro signed with McPherson College. And Zachary Zudith is going to be playing for Texas Lutheran. The students, athletes say it was a big day for them. And they hope that when younger guys and ladies see them sign their letters of intent, that it inspires them to reach all their goals and all their dreams. So congratulations to them. Big day. Yep. All right, coming up next, new today at five, making ends meet. It's just a one day to day challenge a lot of us deal with. Debt is another one, especially credit card debt. How debt combined with inflation is making it difficult to save for the future and some of the simple steps you can do to help. Today at five after entertainment tonight. A record meth bust at the border. U.S. Customs and Border Protection says officers seized 6.5 tons of methamphetamine value at $117 million in just a single confiscation. As he says, it's the largest meth seizure recorded at a port of entry. The seizure happened at the Camino Real International Bridge between Mexico and Texas. Authorities found the drugs after a CBP field operations officer decided to track the trailer needed a secondary inspection. Tomorrow marks the second anniversary of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And as this war drags on with no end in sight, it's becoming more and more expensive for Ukraine's allies. The EU already has spent billions of dollars and it's pledged to spend even more. The U.S. has spent $66 billion on aid for Ukraine. There's another 60 billion U.S. dollars on the way. It's passed the Senate, but now it awaits House approval. But in the middle of the conflict, the Biden administration is adding 500 targeted sanctions against Russia. It's not just in regard to the war, but rather the suspicious death of President Putin's main rival, Alexei Navalny. Navalny died in a Siberian prison last week, and although the death certificate cites his death as from natural causes, Navalny's, Navalny's family and many world leaders believe that Putin is responsible in one way or another. The U.S. sanctions will be imposed by the U.S. Treasury, State and Commerce Departments. Targets include firms in China, Serbia and the United Arab Emirates. 
Pharmacies across the country having trouble processing some prescriptions because of a cyber attack. United Health disclosed the cyber attack in a regulatory filing with the Securities and Exchange Commission Thursday. The company says the cyber attack was against its change health business, which processes insurance prescriptions for tens of thousands of pharmacies nationwide. United Health says it became aware of the cyber attack Wednesday and expected it to last through at least Thursday. The company said it has isolated the attack and is working to restore its systems. Law enforcement has also been notified. Houston, Odysseus has found his new home. The U.S. celebrating a historic landing where no human has been before the South Pole of the Moon. A lunar lander built by Houston-based Intuitive Machines landed successfully last night. It's the first private spacecraft to ever land on the moon, and it's the first American spacecraft to do so in more than 50 years. It's going to study the south pole of the moon, which has water and ice, both critical if you're going to be using the moon as a launching pad to the rest of the universe. It was interesting that they lost control when they were landing it, and then when it it started to go down and I was like, oh, and they fixed it. They had somebody like reprogram the whole thing just in time before it hit the hit the surface. Oh, you couldn't pay me enough money. To go to space? Yeah. And I'll be there. You would? Let me go. Oh yeah. Let me you, go. Justin? Oh, thank you. Thank, right, you. thank you. Justin and I will be right here watching. More yeah. room for me. Yeah, it's true. Uh, hey guys, we, we got to show you a traffic incident here on 410. Uh, 410 in Broadway is uh, what we're looking at here. And I believe this is coming in as a rollover, but it uh, looks like several lanes are blocked. Uh, it looks like uh, as though we're only getting one lane through there on the far right side. And this is westbound 410, I do believe. Uh, so let's take a look at the maps here. We've got two incidents going, actually. 410 and Ray Ellison down there on the southwest side. And then this incident here, which is really starting to stop up traffic on 410 near the airport. So we just want to pass that along. Uh, we'll keep eyes on it uh, with Transguide there. Uh, meantime, uh, temperatures outside at 72 at the airport and New Braunfels, 73 in Seguin, 60s, upper 60s for Bernie and Kerrville. We've got northeasterly winds bringing in some good dry air today. So temperatures will make the way up to about 76 uh, this afternoon. And then uh, dropping down into the 60s by 7 o'clock. You may want a light jacket if you're going to be out and about tonight, but nothing that's too terribly chilly. Uh, we'll make it into the upper 50s by 11 and 12 o'clock. And eventually, I do think we'll drop down into the 40s by tomorrow morning. Great start to your weekend. And boy, you're going to love the temperatures both Saturday and Sunday. Then some changes next week. More on that forecast in just a little bit, guys. Thank you, Justin. Neighbors in an area hit hard by Memorial Day flooding back in 2013, still pushing for changes to avoid another devastating flood. A look at the progress in the Shear Hills Ridgewood neighborhood and what neighbors are still hoping for. That's so nice. I don't, does this mean winter's over? I don't know, but it sure is feeling like spring out there. We still could have a freeze. Yeah, I guess so. We still could. Uh, you're definitely right about that. And we do have some cooler weather coming up next week, but it doesn't look terribly cold, like super cold. It looks like we're kind of moving into more of a spring-like batter. We'll see. Uh, I want to show you a shot of that transguide shot one more time at 410 and Broadway. we got a big uh, issue here that's causing a lot of backups. Uh, I believe this is in the uh, westbound lane, so just... I uh, want to keep you posted there. It looks like they'll uh, be there for a while longer. Meantime, our almanac for today, 72, the high so far, 56, the low this morning, 97, 27 are the records set back in 96 and 1901. What does the weekend look like in the week ahead? We'll take a look. Coming up. Our latest episode of Know My Neighborhood takes us to the Sheer Hills Ridgewood area. It sits next to the Almost Basin and it's the Almost Creek watershed. Some homes within the neighborhood are in a floodplain. And that was never more evident than during the Memorial Day weekend floods back in 2013. We remember them well. Homes went underwater, drivers had to be rescued. Justin Horn, in fact, found out it spurred a change to try to save the neighborhood from another devastating flood. <laughs> I looked out my front window and just right there I saw a car perched against the telephone pole with a child like waving like he might have been in middle school waving out 
um, for help, screaming for help. Realizing there were two kids and their grandmother in the car, Erica and her husband, Lewis, along with her brother, Bradley, jumped into action. Lewis found a rope and tied himself to a nearby tree. So I had to hold it here with the car here, and, uh, and that's when I just started taking the kids out. And then I saw my brother-in-law show up, and so I was able to give him a couple of the kiddos. And then that's when the lady, you know, we had tried to figure out how to get her out. And so when she came out, again, that was when I went into the water. Water that had become a dangerous raging river. I remember seeing big old chunks of asphalt flipping in the street. Forcing him to take action. I just pretty much grabbed both of them and helped them both get out the water. A heroic act that likely saved the lives of those in the car. That was Memorial Day weekend 2013, and almost 11 years later, the city is still working to improve flood control in the neighborhood. Prior to the flood where I'm standing now, you would have found homes here along Barber Drive and across the canal on Shannon Lee Street, more than 30 of them. After the flood, the city bought these homes and demolished them to help make this canal larger. It was part of the Barber Drive drainage project. That was phase one of the project. Phase two has also been completed, while phase three is funded but under design, according to the city of San Antonio, with a price tag for all three phases at $33.8 million. All of it, though, downstream of where the Noriegas live. So they say flooding is still very much an issue. Just last month, their garage flooded from heavy rains. They say it happens often at their home at the corner of Delwood Drive and Beachwood Lane. Is that part of the phase three? It is, so, yeah. but they stop about right here. Yeah. But the infrastructure needs to be up there to pull that water underneath. Right. It's been improved, so like the, and the, what the engineers have told me is that the, the water going down south of like where the, where the channel is, those houses there are protected, but like further upstream, you still have the problem. And for Noriega, she's been on a decade-long quest to make sure this problem doesn't take someone's life. We've been advocating, my mother, all the people that live in this neighborhood, we have been advocating for it to get fixed, for the city to fix it. And like I said, we sit on our porch, and when it is flooding like that, we'll see cars who probably don't know the area and aren't sure that how deep it is, we'll tell them, like, please do not, like, we'll be waving them, like, do not come, yeah, do not cross. That area has had a lot of problems over the years with flooding. They have. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a low area there around the Olmos Basin, but 2013 was just, you know, it was a wild morning. I was working that morning, and it was something like 9 to 10 inches of rain at the airport, and uh, that neighborhood was hit especially hard by that. It also tells you how much the neighbors are concerned about the flooding when they're going to stand out in their front yard and say, don't come down, it's yeah. flooded, don't, don't really come in. Don't. And what Erica told me was that she doesn't want anyone else to get hurt because that, that morning when they had to rescue yep. uh, those two kids and the grandma, that, um, you know, she feels like that could happen again. And she just I think back in 98, there was also an incident just a little bit further down the road, mm -hmm. closer to Almost Basin, yep. that actually took some lives. Um, it's a tough area. Yeah, and, and the city's working on it, but it takes time. You know, these, yeah. these projects take a lot of time and money, so uh, there, there's still more phases to go. Good story. Yep, thank you. Uh, yeah, all part of Know My Neighborhood, and I think we'll be featuring, uh, we will be featuring more neighborhoods coming up. And if you didn't see that episode, it's going to be on our website. It's a very good episode. Interesting neighborhood. Inter old 50s, 60s. Some very interesting yeah. facts yeah. were uncovered yeah. in so. this Know Your Neighborhood. Go yes, check that out. we did some more skating last night on top well, of yeah. all of it. Uh, nobody got hurt. <laughs> That's true. That good. was important. It's a good thing. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at the uh, averages for temperatures as we head into March. We are marching up in temperature. This is the average high here in San Antonio. Our coldest time of the year, of course, is January. And then we start to build. We're on the climb up now. Uh, by the time we get into March, we start to see those averages drift into the 70s. And uh, from there, we know where we go. Top of the mountain there, late August, uh, with highs in the upper 90s. Uh, so yes, it is starting to warm up. And we felt that yesterday in a big way. It was 87 here in San Antonio. Today, not as hot, 75. Two o'clock will be up around 76 by three o'clock, and that's going to be our high temperature today. We'll slip back down into the low 70s by the six o'clock hour, and then 60s and eventually 50s and even some 40s by tomorrow morning. But this is a good looking forecast. If you like blue skies and nice weather, uh, yes, this is for you. As we look out over the airport, uh, we've got temperatures uh, right now in the low 70s, as we said, 73 Seguin, uh, 68 Bernie, 69 in Kerrville. Uh, here's the satellite picture, and there's honestly not a lot to look at here. We've got some very thin high clouds that are coming in, but uh, for the most part, 
a cloud free sky. And that goes for most of Texas. Maybe you're doing some traveling this weekend. You'll have no problems anywhere in the state. All the rain right now is along the East Coast, Raleigh up to Washington and New York is uh, where the rain, the rain is falling right now. There are some high clouds, some high level Pacific moisture that may start to drift in the next couple of days, but it's not going to do anything for our forecast. We're going to have to wait until next week. So this is the upper level pattern. And uh, we've put the colors on here to kind of show you this is the colder stuff. This is the warmer stuff, but this shows the winds in the upper parts of the atmosphere. This is what drives all the storm systems across the country. And when you start to get dips in this uh, wind field here, that's your areas of low pressure coming across the country. So we'll get one that will help to push a front through as we get into Wednesday of next week. And then one behind that, that'll give us some lift and maybe a few showers. Nothing to get too excited about. I don't think our rain chances are great. And in fact, this storm system will create quite a bit of weather across the country, just not necessarily for us. So as we look at future cast precipitation over the next seven days, uh, you see most of it falls to our north. But as we get into Thursday, there is a chance we could see a little bit here, although the bulk of it's going to be up across uh, the Great Lakes. So rainfall this year, we're at 7.59. We're still four inches above average. That's great, but we've hit kind of a dry spell here. We could use some more and uh, maybe we'll get just a little bit next week. Again, uh, it's not going to be a big rain event for us. 76 Saturday, 79 Sunday, 83 on Monday, 82 on Tuesday, mostly cloudy and certainly more clouds by the middle part of next week. We'll be right back. This Rodeo Remembers, powered by your San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Without ranching, there might not be a stock show and rodeo and the birthplace of America's ranching industry can be traced back to one Texan, Captain King. Richard King was born in New York City in 1824, but he wasn't there long. At age 11, he ran away, finding a new home, working the steamboats of the South. In 1847, during the Mexican War, King's steamer skills were put into service. He ran supplies and men along the Rio Grande. And when the war ended, King and his partners turned those routes into a steamer company. On a business trip to Corpus Christi in 1852, King rode through an area known as the Wild Horse Desert. What he saw was opportunity. If horses could flourish, so could a cattle ranch. In the following years, King and his partner purchased large areas of this unused land, but who would work it? After a cattle buying trip to Correas, Mexico, King invited the town back to Texas. The hundred or so that followed became Los Queneños, or King's Men. And with their hard work and King's ambition, the ranch grew. When the Civil War ended, the northern demand for beef was high, and so were the prices. So King seized opportunity once again in 1869 with one of the first big cattle drives. In time, King Ranch became one of the world's largest, and as many copied its success, it became known as the birthplace of the American ranching industry. This Best of Mutton Busted, powered by your San Antonio area Chevy dealers. So you're a big fan of Filipino food, correct? I am. I'm looking forward to SA Live today. Ooh. All right, well, let's get down there to what they got. <laughs> well, we got a lot, but first. Mm -hmm. We are going to check out the Home and Garden Show, and that is where our Jen Tobias is. Hey, Jen. Hey, yes, the spring is a great time, right, to, to work on those happy space projects. Maybe it's a hot tub. Look, we've got our producer hanging out in one here at the Home and Garden Show, or if it's your outdoor area, integrated outdoor designs can help you. Look at this pergola. Oh my goodness, there's so many options here. And we're also gonna share two designers who teamed up with the Habitat Home Store today. They are revealing their rooms, guys. They upcycled everything. It looks amazing. You'll wanna stick around for all of that. 
I okay. love those chairs that you right? were sitting. They I look know. really Could comfortable. Could you put my name on those, Jen, please, mm -hmm. just in case? So. <laughs> and of course, you know, we want to know, share the home project that you're proud of, and of course, post pictures. We'd love to see that, so scan that QR code, and you may see yours in the show. Maybe you put a you know, fresh coat of paint in, in the living room or something like that. No matter or, how basic it was. Yeah, because... Frag on it. You know, you, you get in there and you get that stuff done. With so. that face. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta do it like this. You gotta be concerned about it. And there you get a big smile when you look at all of this great food that we have right here. Hey, yes. Oh, yes, indeed. Okay. Every, oh, and we have never had this before. Crispy outside, juicy inside. I'm gonna cut into that. Oh, I yes, can't wait. it is a new Filipino restaurant in town, and we are tasting the cuisine. Yes, that and a whole lot more coming up on this Friday edition of SA Live.